Welcome to the first part of lecture on understanding Maxwell's equation. Learning objectives of this lecture series is uh, to develop understanding of Maxwell's equation from a historical perspective. We will also discuss about Heaviside's contribution and Henrich Hertz con contribution. Learning outcome, outcomes. After listening to this lectures, listener will be able to understand background of Maxwell's equation. Listener will be able to state and name the differential versions of Maxwell's four laws of electromagnetism and also he, will, he or she will be able to state the Ampere Maxwell's law and explain why it has a greater domain of validity than Ampere's law. If you need a testament to the power of Maxwell's equation, look around you. Television, radio, radar, wireless internet access and Bluetooth technology are a few examples of contemporary technology rooted in electromagnetic field theory. Maxwell's equations are named after James Clerk Maxwell, the Scottish physicist whose pioneering work during the second half of 19th century unified the theories of electricity, magnetism and light. The theory of electromagnetism was built on the discoveries and advances of many scientists and engineers, but the pivotal contribution was that of Maxwell. Today Maxwell's equations are the essential tool of electrical engineers in the design of all types of electrical and electronic equipments. Now we'll discuss about the Heaviside's con contribution. Maxwell's theory predicts electromagnetic waves that travel with the speed of light. Heaviside reasoned that electromagnetic waves could travel on a telegraph cable too. At the time it was believed that the electric telegraph pulses diffused or soaked in the telegraph cable. Although the mathematical tables that arose from the diffusion theory work for short cables, they fail for longer cables. Heaviside's equation based on Maxwell's electromagnetic waves work for cables of all lengths. This finding had a practical application for telegraph communication. For example, Heaviside actually solved one of the biggest problems affecting long distance telegraph and telephone communication in 1887, that is distortion. It was known that the different frequencies travel with different speeds on a long cable. For example, the low bass frequencies in a voice signal travel faster than the high treble frequencies. When the cable is long enough, the frequencies smear and both voice and telegraph signals become grabbled noise. Heaviside uses his equation to show that if inductances, that is a small coil of wire, were added along the length of the cable, the distortion could be reduced. Also, Heaviside sub strongly supported the Faraday-Maxwell's approach to electromagnetism and simplified Maxwell's original set of 20 equations to 4 used today. Importantly, Heaviside rewrote Maxwell's equations in the form that involved only electric and magnetic fields. Maxwell's original equations had included both the fields and uh, potentials. In an analogy to gravity, the field corresponds to the gravitational force pulling an object onto the earth, while the potential corresponds to the shape of the landscape on which it stands. By configuring the equations only in terms of fields, Heaviside simplified them to his so-called duplex notation with the symmetry evident in the equations. He also developed the mathematical discipline of vector calculus with which to apply the equations. Heaviside analyzed uh, the interaction of electromagnetic waves with conductors and derived the telegrapher's equation. Now we'll talk about Heinrich Hertz contribution to electromagnet. Independently of Heaviside, Heinrich Hertz also derived a simplified version of Maxwell's equation, although he later acknowledged the precedence of Heaviside's work. In 1888, Hertz made his most significant contribution with the discoveries of radio waves. This confirmed Maxwell's prediction of electromagnetic waves and thus validated the theory. The unit of frequency, the Hertz, is named in his honor. 
When Hertz began his experiments on electrodynamics in 1886, little was known about Maxwell's idea on the con continent of Europe, where Newtonian action at a distance was still the only paradigm for understanding electrical and magnetic phenomena. Hertz appended his this model by demonstrating that rather than being instantaneous, electromagnetic effects propagate at a finite speed. He was able to measure their wavelength and velocity and to explicate the nature of their reflection and refraction. Even more astonished Even more astoundingly, he discovered the existence of radio waves and the fact that they behave like light. By the end of the decade, Hertz's validation of Maxwell's electromagnetic field theory forced a conceptual revolution within the European community of theoretical physicists. Other notable contributors to electromagnetic wave theory include the work of Lorentz, Ludwig Boltzmann, and Hermann Helmholtz, who developed Maxwell's equation to describe the propagation of light including reflection and refraction at surfaces these four are the four set of equations are these four set of equations are popularly popularly known as a maxwell's equation in the next part of this lecture we will understand the significance of maxwell's equation